Hello and welcome to a surprising race to me. It's over in Ferrari Evolution, which is in the Legend series. Now you could do this in both cars and I'm gonna show you that, but I like the car that has a little more grip, which is this one right here. We're gonna look at several different things here, how to get to the petrol point, how to refill the timer after that, and how to get this car for free or less. Now, I didn't find it too incredibly hard to hit the perpetual point. I found it really hard to refill the timer. And we're gonna have the perpetual point counter running here because the general rule is 42 cars to reach the perpetual point. In fact, I'm finding that's true everywhere in the game. Uh, sometimes it almost seems like it's the 43rd car, but most of the time the 43rd car is the first car after the perpetual point so it still remains true. However, it's kind of a nice thing to follow. Now, these two cars are a lot harder to handle than you're used to. I'm speaking to people who are newer to the game and maybe they just know the newer Formula One cars. Those handle substantially different than these cars. These are arguably the hardest cars to handle in the game. A lot of the older open wheel cars are. Uh, this includes the Lotus Type 125, McLaren MP44, and the McLaren MP4X. All of them are quite hard to manage. I always put my steering sensitivity down to zero when I'm driving any of those cars. I prefer driving with all assists off. Uh, steering assist high really messes me up and I think it would fight you on taking different angles through the corners. Steering assist low should be of no consequence here. And traction control might not be a consequence, but still, you see what just happened right there? I wanna have the option to recover on my own. I don't want traction control getting in the way. And you definitely can't have brake assist on. More on that later. Listen to this thing. That is such an awesome sounding car. Compared to the vacuum cleaner of Volkswagen IDR that I like to drive, I just love the sound of this thing. It's just so loud and awesome sounding. So, more about um, brake assist. If you have brake assist on, you can't take this full time. And same with the, um, the very first chicane that we encounter. Uh, this right here, I doubt you could take that full throttle. Even brake assist low is gonna give you trouble. So, after this corner here, there's a chicane coming up. If you get it perfect, you could actually take this full throttle if there's no one in the way. Majority of the time, you do need to have a slight lift off the throttle, even a little bit more than slight. It's really detrimental when you clip those walls. By the way, look at this. Like, super tiny hitbox. Again, comparing this to the Volkswagen or the Volkswagen IDR, that one has a gargantuan hitbox. I really like that these cars have such a small hitbox. It makes Melbourne feel bigger than it actually is. So that really helps us in making this race. Like, it's just crazy this is possible. Okay, so let's talk about this car a little bit. Purchase price is 950 gold. You don't have to spend any of that. And there is the full upgrade cost for this car. But let's get more into how you could get this car for less than nothing. The event is called Motor Fiesta 1, which is part of the Legends series. You can earn the car 135 gold and 70,000 R dollars without buying any upgrades if you got the skills for it. To buy the R only upgrades, which is more than just tier 1, would be 972,600 R dollars. Now, my friend Speedmaster has a whole video series on this where he did it with no upgrades at all. The link is appearing right now, and I'm also going to throw it at the end of this video. I don't mind promoting Speedmaster at all. He's a fabulous racer, and he's a great guy. So, right here, coming into this chicane, if you've got brake assists on, it's going to really hurt you there. It's going to slam on the brakes, so I'm going to say forget about it. Not possible. And this is, uh, this is tricky, so... If you follow what I was saying at the beginning, and man, I'm just blowing it here. I'm so embarrassed. There we go. I finally got my him. And then I clipped that wall. And then I clipped that wall. This car, what makes it difficult is, once you start to slide, you really slide. So, let's talk about how difficult this race is. As you can tell by the amount of mistakes I'm making, it's not that difficult. Like, don't get me wrong, this is hard. It took me a few tries to get here, and oh, I forgot, I gotta apologize. 
If you're one of the people, yes, this is really embarrassing right now. Don't worry, I'm going to dial it in. I got asked about this race probably just a month or so ago. And someone asked me if it was possible. I didn't realize some of my YouTube friends had already posted videos about this. So I said, sure, Melbourne's possible if you're God. And so I'm really sorry, guys. I never imagined this was possible. But um, one of the fellows that posted a video, he's a good, legit racer. He doesn't hack. He doesn't do anything nefarious like that that I really hate. Um, so I started practicing. And it took me about three tries to reach the perpetual point. And what you're seeing here is my fifth try. So I'm pretty happy with it. We're going to see, though, that you, you can't be really sloppy here. So I've always said, you've heard this, if you've seen my other videos about endless endurance racing and the perpetual point, You've heard me say that the hardest part of an endless race is right before you reach the perpetual point. That's not true here. Um, don't get me wrong, it is challenging to hit the perpetual point, but it gets a little bit harder after that because at that point you probably have maximum damage. And maximum damage here, at first you might think it's not a big deal because, oh, well, I'm only losing speed and I don't ever hit top speed here. No, 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 that's not the problem. The problem is the loss of grip. So that loss of grip means that you have to alter every single braking point and every single acceleration point. That becomes the problem. Like that corner right there, I just took full throttle. Got to get a lot more careful with that when you've got max damage. And there is no windshield, so you can't really tell you have max damage unless you just pause the game and take a look at your front wing. If you look at the thumbnail shot for this video, you'll see my front wing is toast. And that's a great way to see if you've got max damage or not. Uh, there are other ways to tell too, because you'll just feel that the handling is shot. So these cars are difficult to handle. And uh, I've got a whole video. I made this video years ago, right before the first Formula One season came. And I thought the, all the cars were going to be brutally hard. However, the video really serves a purpose. And I'll put a link up here. It will also appear at the end. In that video are lots of tips about how you handle these types of cars that are quite different from the Formula One cars. Okay, so I passed the 40-second car. So then we've got this big gap. And remember, there's been huge gaps. I've been seeing like one car a lap. So after I pass this car, how soon do we see someone else? There's the question mark. Okay, well, there's someone right there. So it's reasonable that that really was the first car of the perpetual point. Let's see who's after this guy. I'm not going to let those question marks go away till I can see what's after him. Oh, well, that looks pretty good. So I'll shut down the perpetual point counter and we'll move on. And now we got to settle in. Like, look at my timer. Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm getting into the red. Sure, I got to muscle him out of my way. And uh, we're going to warp ahead a little bit here. Watch the warp zone. We've gone quite far and I'm still, I'm still fighting, 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 fighting. So you got to really settle in and drive carefully. You got to blast that chicane every time because the robot drivers take it terribly and really watch some of these corners. You don't want to touch the walls. If you are going to touch a wall, try to touch it with your rear end only, not your front end. So if you're going to hit a wall, Try to throw yourself sideways a little bit and bounce off the wall. Uh, that's going to help you. You always want to take advantage of that passing zone as well. You can pass uh, up high or down low. Uh, up high like I did on the outside is easier. Uh, down low is also possible. You have to time it better. And this corner, it's kind of annoying sometimes. It's actually a very short breaking point. Now again, here I got to plan this overtake. There, you see that? Just blast past these guys. Okay, so the cars I'm up against right now have a higher PR value. If you remember seeing that from my opening screen, all these cars are a higher PR value. They have greater acceleration, slightly less grip, 3.55 versus my 3.6, uh, but better brakes. And I've got better top speed, but I don't really think that's gonna matter here at all because we're not really getting close to that. But I like the handling of the, of the 412 T2 that I'm driving. I like the handling just a skosh better. But um, after we go through the earnings numbers, then I will show you footage of me doing this in the F14T, which was the first car I tried it in. Warping ahead a little bit here again. So when I tried it in the F14T, I didn't feel like I got anywhere near the perpetual point, felt like a total disaster. 
And then I noticed that uh, another fellow was using this car, so I gave this car a shot. And I found that I liked that. It wasn't, didn't seem as difficult for me. And uh, I got him the F14T again and did pretty good. But look at this, guys. Look at this. I'm refilling the timer. And I'll get into that a little bit. In fact, it's so monumental, we're going to zoom in here as I refill the timer for the first time since hitting the perpetual point. Yay! It's so awesome. And as we approach the, the overpass here, the underpass, I'm going under it, we'll warp ahead some more. The secret of refilling this timer is really just knowing how to handle this car. That means getting on the brakes a little bit early and then get your turning done, then blast back on the accelerator. Uh, we're going to warp ahead here again and really trying to avoid those walls. You want as little wall contact as possible and recover. Don't be afraid to use your bumper. Once you're toast, who really cares? I am gonna stop this right at 100 kilometers and call the race at that point. We'll let, we'll let it count down. To give you an accurate fame for minute number, I'm gonna do this, stop it here, so you know what you, if you kept going longer and longer, you know, oh, okay, I could just double this number roughly and that's gonna give me my 200 kilometer mark because the earnings in this race are just shocking. By the way, this is really funny. Off track penalty? Why yes, there are some curbs where you can have two tires off track at Melbourne. And I made a special video that shows how some of these off track penalties are calculated. Look at that, just shy of 1300 frame per minute and 8600 R dollars a minute. Double that with the agent and manager, even more on bonus fame and bonus R days. Now, check it out, the Ferrari F14T, and look how far I am. I'm past 100 kilometers. This car just always seems weird to me. It looks so tiny on the track. Like, it just doesn't seem right. This car looks too small. The other car, the, uh, the 412, looked more planted, and this car, I don't know, they just always look a little bit comical to me. <laughs> okay, so let's get into some of the numbers on this car. Purchase price is 1,050 gold, but you can get the showcase discount if you start the Ferrari Evolution series driving the 412T2. Then the other prices you see there were the full upgrade costs. So although I'm getting quite far, I don't like this car as much as the 412T2. I found that I had to be a little more careful with it, especially after maximum damage. It just it's a little touchier. The grip suffers a little bit more from maximum damage. I mean, remember, we're starting uh, 0.5 grip lower in this car already. And that last corner, um, I'll, I'll mention, I'll refer to this when we get around the lap here. You can't take everything the same way. So I can brake later heading into this, but because the brakes are definitely better in this car. So you can brake a little bit later here and there, but it's it's really challenging. I was debating doing a lap in drive review. No, I don't feel comfortable with my timer yet, so not going to happen. And that was a little bit risky. This corner is interesting in these cars. You got to be so careful or you end up eating that wall. And then the cars wiggle after you hit the wall. You got to be ready for the wiggle. So not this corner, but this next corner. I found I really couldn't take it the same in this car compared to the 412. I had to take it a little bit easier. Couldn't full throttle it near as much. This corner, no problem, full throttle in either car. And like on the one hand, it feels like this race should be easier in this car because this car just looks smaller and it has a small hitbox just like the 412, but I just I just never jived with it. Never really felt comfortable with this car compared to the 412. Never did refill my timer after hitting the perpetual point. And one other thing, this car just doesn't sound near as good. The 412 is just like, Arr, nasty growling in your face and it would be so awesome to hear it in a city circuit where the sounds are bouncing off buildings and all that rest but at any rate we're gonna wrap up this video uh, i'm gonna start posting links like here's the link to speedmaster series on how to do motor fiesta one with no upgrades at all and here's the link about how to handle these types of cars and i'll throw another link up here just couple more links for some fun so thanks for joining me please like please subscribe see you again